Hello, victorious ones. How are you doing? I hope everyone is having an amazing, golden, victorious day in the Lord. So I'm coming on here to just talk to you all for a little bit, to be led by the Holy Spirit, to encourage somebody. God is so good. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your mercy, Lord. We thank you for your grace. Father, we thank you for who you are. You are King of Kings. You are Lord of Lords. Abba, you are the Alpha. You are the Omega. You are the beginning. You are the ending, Lord. Father, I thank you that you are a good father. You take care of your children. You fight for your children. Lord, I thank you. Father, please forgive us of all of our sins. Anything that we did that was not of you, Father, we repent right now. Hallelujah. Anything we thought about that was not of you. Anything that we said, anything that we did that was not of you, Father God, reveal those things to us, Father. We repent. We change our minds right now, Father God. We run from the burning house of sin and we run to your throne of grace and mercy to receive help in the time of need and to worship you, Abba, in spirit and in truth, in the name of Jesus. Father, we put on the whole armor right now from head to toe. Father, we put on your armor. We cover ourselves, our families, our possessions, our region, this day, the nations, with the blood of Jesus. Father, I thank you that your, your angels, your angels have been released. More angels, legions upon legions of angels have been released, oh God, to help us today in the name of Jesus. They are in camp around us, around our spouses, around our children, around the body of Christ, around our homes, around our neighborhoods, around our vehicles, Father God. Your angels are in camp all around us, oh God, because we fear you. Psalm 91 is our birthright on repeat. Oh God, we thank you. Lord, I thank you that no weapon formed against us will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us in judgment, we have a right to condemn. Father God, that's our heritage. And Father, you are our vindication. You're giving us vindication, Lord. And so, Lord, we pause right now to say thank you. Thank you, Father God, that the battles belong to you. Every battle belongs to you and you fight for us. And so we stand still according to Exodus 14, 14, Father God, where you're giving us complete victory. We have complete victory on repeat. And all we have to do is stand. And having done all to stand, Abba, you said, stand therefore. And so, Lord, we buckle the belt of truth around our DNA right now. And we stand still, Father, with the shield of faith lifted up. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, lifted up in the name of Jesus. We have on the helmet of salvation. Our minds are stayed on you, Father God. You said you would keep us in perfect peace if our minds are stayed upon you. And Abba, you said, if we meditate upon your word day and night, we shall be like your oaks of righteousness, your cedar, your juniper, your palm trees. Father, planted by the riverbanks of your word, bearing much fruit, our leaves will never wither. And all that we do for you will be prosperous in the name of Jesus. And so our minds are stayed on you. The helmet is covering up our eyes, our ears, our mouths, oh God. Hallelujah. We're looking to the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help is coming from you, Abba, the maker of heaven and earth. And so we put on the breastplate of righteousness. Where we have been made righteous by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you that we have on the gospel shoes of peace. We have the preparation of the gospel of peace. Lord, I thank you that our feet have been anointed. And we put on the gospel shoes of peace. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him will never perish but have eternal life and life more abundantly. Father God, I thank you that we pray for all the saints. We have the whole armor on and we put the armor on our children and we put the armor on our spouses, Lord. Father, we put the armor on the body of Christ. We are protected. You are a wall of fire around us. And your angels are, Father, around, they are around us, surrounding us, Father God, with their fiery chariots in the name of Jesus, with their fiery swords drawn to fight for us on this day. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise your holy name. Hallelujah. And so, Abba, right now, I decrease so that you can increase, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I cover this broadcast and everybody who's listening, I cover us with the blood of Jesus. Lord, open up our ears to hear what you're saying. Because we understand that sometimes we hear and, 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 and we're listening and we're seeing things, but we don't understand. And so, Lord, I thank you for your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding that you're giving to us right now. I speak effort that to our eyes, our, our spirits, our, our, our hearts right now, our ears, every part of us. Father, we are open to receive what you will give us on this day. Father, give us this day, our daily bread. Father, begin to teach us, help us to grasp what you're showing to us. Father God, help us to pray attention. Lord, I thank you. Teach us, oh God. You said my people perish. They are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And so, Father God, begin to enlighten us, oh God. Open up our hearts. Open up our minds. Open up our spirits to receive your word right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. That we don't have to be anxious for anything or about anything. Father, you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And so you said be anxious for nothing. But Father, you said we can pray. And you, you've given us the keys. You're giving us some keys today. You're revealing the keys to us. The keys of the kingdom. You're revealing to us the blessed doors today. In the name of Jesus. And so father you said. If my people. Which are called by my name. You're telling us what to do. To get the blessing. To get the healing. To get the breakthrough. And so father God you said. If my people. Which are called by my name. And so Lord I thank you that we're called by your name. Because we've accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. We're called by your name Lord. In the name of Jesus. We've been adopted by you, Father God, I thank you. And you said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. And so right now, Father, we ask for, for, for this, the spirit of humility. You said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and in due season, Father, in due time, you will exalt us. And so we humble ourselves right now in the name of Jesus, in your presence. We humble ourselves. We seek your face. We turn from our wicked ways. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Oh, Lord, I thank you for prayer because it's the effectual, fervent prayers of a righteous man that avail it much. Pray without ceasing. Pray like the persistent widow. It's time to pray and seek First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all that you need will be added unto you. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn, turn, turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. And so, Father God, we obey right now. We turn back to you, oh God, fully surrendered. Having a new name, oh God, because you have changed our names. Father God, now we are the children of the most high God. Blessed and highly favored by you. 
And so we turn right now, reverse, back to your will. In the name of Jesus. And Father God, you said, then will I hear from heaven. And Abba, you said you will forgive our sins. And you will heal our land. You will heal our families, oh God. And so we agree with the word right now. We touch and agree with the word. And Lord, I thank you that your angels have been released to fulfill 2 Chronicles seven fourteen in our lives right now in the name of Jesus. We surrender all to you. Not our will, but your will be done. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. And so we surrender right now. We pause in your presence, Selah, to hear what thus saith the Lord. And so last night, Lord, I thank you that this prayer in all of us is covered in the blood and sealed with the seal of the Holy Ghost. Last night, I heard the word coalition. And so I'm just going to release what I heard. Let me go ahead and, and get everything for you. Release it and, and keep it moving. Keep it moving. And so I heard it and I wrote it down and to remind myself of what I heard. And so the word, it says coalition. And I looked it up and it says an alliance for combined action. Especially a temporary alliance of political parties forming a government or of states. And some of the words that mean the same thing, the synonyms, it says alliance, partnership, affiliation. It says association, confederacy. Mm. It says alignment, combination. And so the Lord is destroying every evil coalition that's been coming against you in the name of Jesus. They will conspire, they will conspire, they will come together to fight against you. But the Lord says, your enemies that come against you will be defeated and they will scatter seven different ways. They come and they plot. Judas began to plot against Jesus with the religious leaders. But the Bible says no weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, Abba says you have a right to condemn. They've been plotting. Mm. They've been plotting against you. But God said, I'm destroying all of that. And the Lord is releasing confusion into the camp of the enemy. And so whatever they're plotting is God is tearing it all down because you are a, a, a son and daughter of the most high God. And he said he will fight your battles for you coalition and the other word i looked up because i when i heard coalition i thought about demonic conspiracy conspiracy is a secret plan by a group and we know the enemy comes in a group he comes in a group different demons come in different different Mm, seducing people and, and possessing them to come to work against you. But you're protected by God. You're protected by God. And you need to know that. Conspiracy, a secret plan by a group to do something harmful, unlawful against the laws of God. And it says to, to plot harm against you. Now, the Bible says in Jeremiah 29 and verse 11 that God is thinking great thoughts about you. He said, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So if it's going to bring harm, 
that's not of God, that's satanic, and you have power and authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the devil and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Conspiracy. It says plot, scheme, plan, okay? And so you now, ooh, got to know who you are and destroy every wicked plot, plan, schemes of the enemy. They will try to rise up against you and your family, but they will be defeated right before your eyes. Because God says, I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse those who curse you. Now, let me give you some scriptures. God is, God is fighting for you. God is fighting for you. Let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me get some verses for you real quick. And then, and then that's it. Let, let's go ahead and give you some scripture. God, write this down. God is releasing confusion into the camp of the enemy. Confusion. How do I know? Because in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, a group was coming against King Jehoshaphat and the Israelites in them, right? The, the God's people. And God's people began to fast and pray. So you need to write that down. Fast and pray. And the Lord began to release the word that the battle does not belong to you. The battle belongs to God. And he said, believe in the Lord God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you will be successful. You'll be prosperous, right? You're going to make it. Now, the Bible says, because God is releasing confusion into the camp of the enemy that's been coming against you and your marriage, your kids. The, the king placed the praise and worship team before the army. You know the story. And the Bible says in verses 22 to 23. Now, when they began to sing and to praise, that's why you can't lose your joy. You can't, you can't abandon your praise and worship because that is a weapon against the enemy. And, and it's going to release confusion into the camp of the enemy. So get your worship song together. It's time to praise the Lord because as you begin to praise and worship, this was going to happen. This was going to happen. It says, now, when they began to sing and to praise Praise who? God. The Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. The coalition, the conspiracy team. God began to set ambush. And it says, these are the people that came against Judah. Came against your praise. The enemy wants you to be depressed and, 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 and be frustrated. But Judah means praise. And it's time for you to praise the Lord in advance. Because he's getting ready to give you a breakthrough like never before. You're getting ready to see some things turn around in your life in the name of Jesus. And so it says that came against Judah. And they were defeated, right? For the people of Ammon and Moab stood against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. Why? Because God released confusion into the camp where, where the enemy began to fight themselves. Your enemy get ready to fight themselves. Come on. Look, I'm starting to sweat already. I didn't even get started yet. What they're plotting against you, it's going to come back on them. It's going to come back on them. And they're going to destroy. Look at it. It says they helped to destroy one another. God released confusion in their camp. Let's keep on going. There's another story where God released confusion. Remember Gideon? For those of you who feel like, oh my goodness, I don't have this much and it's only me. and I'm, uh, You serve a big and mighty God. And heaven's armies is fighting for you. Legions upon legions of God's angels are fighting for you. And so the Bible said God purposely decreased Gideon's army, right? He had thousands of, of soldiers. And God said, nope, send them home. All those who are afraid, send them home. All those who drank the water the wrong way, send them home. By the time it was said and done, Gideon only had 300 small number. All you, all you need is a little bit because that's what God's going to use is your little bit. Just ask the widow with a little bit of oil. Just ask Jesus. He said mustard seed faith. All you need is a little bit. Okay. Just ask the widow of, of Zarephath. She had a little bit of oil and a little bit of flour and twigs. And that was enough for God to bless her because she was obedient. 
You take your little bit and you're obedient to God and God said, I'm going to multiply it. Now Gideon only had 300. Go read it. The book of Judges 6 and 7. And the Bible says in Judges 7, 22, when the 300 Israelites blew their horns, the Lord caused the warriors in the camp to fight against each other with their swords. The enemy began to fight each other. Amen. And that's how, that's how Gideon got his breakthrough. Let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. I'm going to give you one more. And then we're going to go on into the word. Because you have to have, you have, to have the word. The Bible said, when the Egyptians, talk about Egyptians right now. The Egyptians, Lord, 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 help me, help me, Father God, I'm sweating. Whoo, child. God is giving you deliverance. It doesn't matter how many is coming against you. They are not bigger than God. They're not bigger. God is El Gabor. He's fighting for you. Mighty warrior champion. I don't care what it is. Whatever that's coming in your mind right now. God said I'm bigger. Greater is he who lives inside of you. Than anything else. The devil in the world. Whatever bill you have. Whatever marital problem you have. Whatever parental problem you have. Whatever it is. God said I'm greater. And I'm getting ready to show you my power. And so the Bible says. That the Israelites, the, the Egyptians, right? A whole country, y'all, Egypt, enslaved God's people for over 400 years. But God sent Moses. Because God has, God, God has already sent Moses, his name is Jesus, to set the captives free. And so God was leading them out, leading his people out of bondage out of Egypt, giving them a mass exodus. It's time for your freedom. Your children are being set free. Your spouse is being set free. Your whole household is being set free. Ask me how I know. And so as they were leaving, you know, God done released the plagues and everything. But Pharaoh's heart, still hard, still want to pursue God's people. God going to deal with those who are pursuing you. God's going to deal with those coalitions and demonic um, confederacies and, and, and all of that. So they had a great idea. I know God is protecting them, but we're going to go after them. Whew. We're going to challenge the most high God. Because when you fight against a believer, you're fighting against God. So it says in Exodus 14, 24 to 25. But early in the morning, the Lord looked down on the Egyptian army from the pillar of fire and cloud, and he threw them into confusion. Their chariot wheels began to come off. Some things that's been chasing you, following you, God's putting a stop to it. It ends now. Enough. God made it where their chariot wheels began to come off. Making their chariots impossible to drive. They shall accelerate no more against you. You are accelerating. You are advancing. And so while, while God began to part the Red Sea. And his people began to cross over on dry land. To the promised land. And that's what God is doing for your family. And anything that's behind you. That's chasing you. This is their portion. Their chariot wheels began to come off. Making their chariots impossible to drive. And it says, they said, let's get out of here. They, they began to shout. The Egyptians shouted. The Lord is fighting for Israel against us. The Lord threw them into confusion. And they drowned. And that's what's going on with you right now. The groups that's coming against you. Those satanic plot plan schemes. God said, I'm drowning them out. I'm drowning them out. And the Egyptians you see today, you shall see them no more forever. And you're crossing over now into where you should have been. That stuff was trying to hold you up and tangle you. But God said, I've given you a breakthrough. 
I'm making a way out of no way. I'm making a way even in the Red Sea. Look at that. On their right and their left, there was wilderness. Nowhere to go. Behind them was Pharaoh's army. And before them was the Red Sea. And God said, Moses, you better use that staff in your hand. Use the staff of my word. And began to speak to your mountains. Began to speak to your Red Sea. Because when you move by faith, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back you up. I'm going I'm to confirm my word. And so we saw how God began to send his wind. And God parted the Red Sea. And that's what he's doing for you. It might look impossible for you. Right? But what's impossible with a man, it's possible with God. And God is giving you your breakthrough. And, and, and those, those coalitions and those, those evil confederacy or groups or whatever demonic activity that's been coming against you, that's following you, the familiar spirits, the, the, the poverty, the debt, the lack, the infirmity, sickness, disease, whatever, the rebellion, whatever that's been in your bloodline. Because you have been praying the word of God, releasing the staff of the word. God said, I'm giving you a whole miracle. I'm getting ready to show you something. And so as they began to walk forward, don't look behind you. God said, forget the past. I'm getting ready to do a new thing for you. They began to go forward because the way has been made. God said, for every temptation, for every blockage, I'm giving you a way of escape. And I need for you to keep on walking, keep on going. I will deal with your enemies. You don't got to fight. You don't got to stand still and see my deliverance. And so as they made their way across into their new season, God began to drown out their enemies, driving them into confusion. Because God is fighting that battle for you, beloved, victorious ones. And it's going to be supernatural. Your posture is to obey God. Humble yourself. Seek his face. Turn from your wicked ways. That's your posture. Ask me how I know. In the book of 2 Samuel, if you have your Bible, get it. Please get your Bible. 2 Samuel 5, chapter 5. I'm going to read something for you, with you and then we're going to be finished. That's it. Let's get in the word of God. Let me show you what this looks like. And so the Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 5, starting at verse 17. Starting at verse 17. If you have your Bible, give me a thumbs up. We're going to get in the word of God because God only confirms his word. Amen. Let me, let me pull it up on my phone as well. I'm going to have it in two different places because I want to read the NLT version for you. This is a powerful story. Let's go ahead and read it together in the name of Jesus. The NLT is one of the versions I'll be using. And so the Bible says in verse 17, When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king of Israel. Watch out for them people. <laughs> That's being used by the enemy. Watch out for any wickedness. Just watch out. When God is elevating you. Has anointed you. Appointed you for a task. Watch out for the Philistine spirit. When they heard that David had been anointed king of Israel, what did they do? They mobilized all their forces to capture him. And so you've been living for God, doing what God's been telling you to do. And here come the spiritual warfare. Enemy, the enemy wants to capture you. The Philistine and all their little coalition want to come against David. But the Bible says, but David was told they were coming. And so God is getting ready to expose some things to you. Because God said, I don't do nothing without telling my prophet. David was told they were coming. So he went into the stronghold. Come on, victorious ones. God is your stronghold. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. God is getting ready to reveal some stuff to you. But you got to get in the stronghold. 
And so the Bible says in verse 18, the Philistines arrived and spread out across the valley of Rephraim. And Rephraim means um, dwelling place of the dead. And it also means giants. And so the reason why they come together, conspiring against you, conspiring, right? They want to intimidate you. That giant want to be a giant in your life. But David already showed you how to deal with the giant. Release the fiery stone of the word of God and take the sharper than a two-edged sword word of God and cut off the head of every Goliath. This is, this is it right here. It says, they arrived and spread out across the valley of Rephraim, the place of death. The enemy wants to kill, steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you have life and have life more abundantly. Listen, so verse 19, David is like, oh my goodness, they're spread out against me. What am I going to do? And the Bible said in verse 19, so David asked the Lord. It's time for you to really get in the stronghold of the Lord and have a conversation with the Lord. Ask the Lord what to do. God said, no matter where you're at, I will be there to lead and guide you, telling you this is the way. Walk in it. Don't be panicking and going crazy. Go to God about it. And God says, call on me. And I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that you don't know. It's time for you to go to God and ask God what to do about that marriage. Ask him again. Sometimes you forget, you get in your emotions, you get distracted. Go to God again. David always went to God. Always inquired. Okay? Always went to God. Because you don't know what to do. Because if you do it in your own strength, you're going to mess it up. Go to God. He said, trust in the Lord with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge the Lord. And he will make your path straight. In the name of Jesus, David is showing us how to get our breakthrough. And I'm praying attention. The Philistines had giants, y'all. How many of you are dealing with things that's so big and it's coming to intimidate you? Witchcraft. But David knew my God is bigger than the giants, bigger than the dead things that's coming against me. And so he inquired of the Lord and he said, should I go out to fight? The Philistines, do you want me to fight? Do you want me to do this? Do you want me to divorce? Do you want me to move? Do you want me to get a new job? Father God, what do you want me to do? He's asking questions. The first question, should I go out to fight the Philistines? Number two, will you hand them over to me? Go to God with your questions. He said, come and talk to me. Come and talk to me about it. The battle belongs to me. I am the author and finisher of your faith. I know what you should do about it. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all that you need will be added unto you. I'm preaching this for myself. This Lord, I thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Come and talk to me about it, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Before I placed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. You don't have to figure it out by yourself. Come and talk to me about it. In my presence, there's fullness of joy. And at my right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Come and talk to me about it. Like Hannah did. She was barren. She was barren and her enemy was mocking her. But she went and talked to God about it. And she fasted and she was praying at the altar. Because when you pray to God, he answers you. And by the time she left there, left, left the, 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 the place of the Most High God at Shiloh, the Lord began to open up her womb and she gave birth to several children. God says, come and talk to me about it. 
and I will show you what to do. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. And so David went and he talked to God about it. And the Lord replied to David. Because God's not going to ignore you. And he said, yes, go ahead. I will certainly hand them over to you. And so in verse 20, David went to Baal Perizim. And the Lord caused them to defeat the Philistines there. The Lord did it, David exclaimed. And go ahead and put that in the chat. The Lord did it. God said, it is already finished. I just need, you, need for you to come into agreement with it. David began to exclaim, the Lord did it. He burst through my enemies. Like a raging flood, like the breaking through of water. And the Bible said, the Philistine, verse 21, they ran away. But here come verse 22. For those of you, God, God gave you victory the last time. But here comes the enemy again. That's what you got. You have to have that endurance and, and that consistency and that persistency. The Bible says in verse 22, after the Philistine got beat up and ran away, after a while, the Philistines returned. They came back and they did the same thing. They began to spread out across the valley of, of Rephraim, the place of the dead. It, it, it also means the giants. And what did David do? What are you going to do when the problem comes back? Because some, sometimes the enemy will try to come back to see if you still got that fire, to, to, to see what you're still about, like he did with Jesus. Began to test Jesus in Matthew 4. And every time the enemy came, Jesus said, it is written. It is written. It is written. You must resist the devil and he will flee from you. That's what the Bible says. And so the Philistine came back. What are you going to do when they come back? Are you going to forget what God did the last time and fall apart? Or are you going to do the same thing, the same, you know, faithful works of the Lord? You're going to do it, do it again. It's up to you. The choice is yours. I'm just giving you the message. Follow what David is doing in this passage. Inquire of the Lord. And you shall recover your blessings. And you shall defeat that thing that's coming against you. Because God is the one who's fighting for you. And so the Philistine, the giant, came back. The marriage was doing good. But here comes something. The children were doing good. But here come that thing. You was, you was on fire for God. But here come that Philistine. The Philistines are coming back. What is going to be your response? Are you going to fall apart? Or are you going to go to God? And the Bible says, verse 23, and again, you come against me again? Again, David asked the Lord what to do. do and, and, and this is what God says. That's why you cannot lean to your own understanding what you did last time. God might not be giving you the same strategy. This time, God says, do not attack them straight on. God began to give him a different strategy. Do not attack them straight on. God's giving you wisdom, Matia. The last time you did that, God is giving you another level of wisdom. Giving you another set, another set of keys. And God is showing you the way to go. Do not attack them straight on. The Lord replied, I don't want you to do that. This is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. Instead, circle around behind and attack them near the poplar trees. God going to give you the strategy, how to deal with that child, how to deal with that health situation, how to deal with your finances. He's going to give it to you in a dream, in a vision. He's going to send divine destiny helpers to show you. Circle around behind. Go behind. 
and attack them near the poplar trees. That's number one. In verse 24, God says, when you hear a sound like marching feet in the tops of the poplar trees, that's where you got to listen, pray attention. God is talking to you. You got to have your senses, spiritual senses alert because God is dealing with your conspirators. That you can, that those are conspiring against you. God is dealing with those evil coalition, but you got to make sure you're praying attention, that, 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 that you're close to, to, to God's lips and you're listening and you're praying attention so you can see what he's showing you, so you can hear what he's saying. He said, you need to listen to me. Go in the back near the poplar trees and I need for you to listen. He who has an ear, let him hear what God is saying. When you hear a sound like marching feet in the tops of the poplar trees, because your help is coming from above, they are going to be heaven's armies marching at the top of the trees. Huh? I don't get it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And lean not to your own understanding. Follow what God is telling you. It's going to be supernatural. You're going to hear people walking in the trees. And your flesh not going to understand this. Because this is not about your flesh. It's about your spirit. Coming in agreement with the Lord. Because they that worship the Lord must worship him in spirit and in truth. And you're going to hear the marching. Heaven's army is here. Pray attention. You're not going to be able to see it with your natural eyes. Don't go by what you see with your natural eyes. Go by what your, the Holy Spirit is showing you. And so the Bible says, when you hear a sound like marching feet in the tops of the poplar trees, right? Be on alert. Be vigilant. Be on alert. Make sure you're awake. You're wide awake. Because that will be the signal that the Lord is moving ahead of you to strike down the Philistine army, to destroy the giants, to destroy the things that was coming against you, challenging the word of God. And so David, verse 25, David didn't say, I didn't I don't get it. I don't understand. He didn't go to go ask this person, that person. You think that was the Lord? You think? No, the Bible says David did what the Lord commanded. The same God who's been help was helping him his whole life. And God has been helping you your whole life. He did what the Lord commanded. And he struck down the Philistines all the way from Gibeon to Gezer. Why? Because the Lord gave him the position that he needed to be in. God told him the how and the when and the why. Listen, when, 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 when Egypt was coming against the, 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 the Hebrew baby boys, God gave Moses' mother a strategy. God is always giving you a way of escape. You just got to be obedient. You just got to pray attention. And the Bible said when she could not hide Moses any longer, God told her what? Go get you a basket. And pitch it up and put him in the basket. And she could have been like, no, oh no, I don't want to put my baby in the basket. Lean not to your own understanding. Trust the Lord. His plan is to prosper you. And when a big army is coming against you, a whole, a whole coalition, a, a whole conspiracy is coming against you. God is going to give you a way of escape. One mother against Egypt. She put her baby in the basket, put him in the river by the reeds. At the same time that Pharaoh's daughter was coming out to, to bathe or whatever, hang out at that spot. And God gave her a deliverance. God gave her a breakthrough, gave her her deliverance. And her baby survived. Because Miriam, Moses' older sister, was watching the whole thing. And when the princess royalty got the baby, Miriam said, should I get a Hebrew mother to go and, and nurse him? Well, should, I, should I go get a Hebrew mother 
And they said, go ahead, go ahead. And she went and got Jochebed, her mother. And now the mother was hired and was being paid to take care of her own baby. Because God says, I know everything concerning you. And I'm going to show you what to do. So while they're plotting against you, trying to destroy you, I have my, my listen, I have great plans for you. And I will fight against them that fight against you. And you will always be the head and not the tail. Above only and never beneath. And the enemies that rise up against you must scatter seven different ways. Because I told you to stand still and you will see my deliverance. You will see my salvation in the name of Jesus. And that is the word of the Lord. I don't know who that was for. Mm. But I know that was for me. God is releasing confusion into the camp of the enemy. Pharaoh's daughter didn't even know. <laughs> she was confused, oblivious that God had already set things in motion. It was God all along. It was God. And as long as you are walking with the Lord, the Bible said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And God is going to lead you to green pastures. He's going to lead you to a place called victory. And you got to keep your just you got to keep your eyes on the Lord. If David had done the same thing he had done before, as far as the same strategy is, you know, the same thing to fight the enemy, perhaps he would have lost. But I love how David went to God and said, what should I do? He wasn't presumptuous. And he didn't try to do the same thing he did before. Because yesterday's, listen, yesterday's anointing, that was yesterday. God giving you a fresh anointing. He said, my mercies are new every morning. That's why he said, don't store the manna. Because they're going to be maggots on it. Do not put me in a box. Don't become religious. Because I might not move the same way in this situation over here as I did over there. And so that's what religious people do, that religious spirit. You think God is going to always move the same way. But God is big and he knows everything, right? And so you got to go to him for the instructions because you can't solve every math problem the same way. There's different equations that call for different strategies. So do not be, do not be deceived. Well, I did it like this last time. New. God said, I'm giving you new wisdom, new understanding, new strategies. That's why God is supposed to be in front of you. He is the shepherd leading you, right? And you are the sheep that's following in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. All right, now, Miss Janice, I don't know what, what time you came on, but go ahead and tell us, what is the Holy Spirit showing you this morning? Well, this afternoon now. What is the Holy Spirit showing you this morning? And who else is on here? I think Atiyah. I'm not sure who else. What is the Holy Spirit showing you today? And if you missed the first part, go ahead and watch the replay when I post it. But what is the Lord showing you today? Mm, thank you, Lord. What are you walking away with today? <laughs> and you can write it down and everybody else. What is the Lord showing you? And get your notebook out and, and, and write down what God is saying to you. Because we don't always remember. Okay? We don't always remember. So write it down. Janice says, thankful blessings. Come on. Now listen. My, my glasses are all fogging up. Okay, it's so hot here in Virginia. Mm. What is the Lord showing you today? In the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the word today. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes. Whew, I'm so excited. I don't got to figure anything out. I get to go to God. I don't have to lean to my own understanding. 
I don't have to have any religious acts. Right? Oh, I did this last time. I'm going to do that again. We are to always pray, always live holy, always cry out to God. But the methods and, and the systems and stuff, like the strategies that God gives to you, that he's going to give to you, it might change. It might change. And so don't lean to your own understanding. Learn from David. Inquire of the Lord. And God will give you specific instruction. That means all throughout the day, you have to be praying attention. Because sometimes God is speaking to you, but we don't recognize his voice. And so he's showing you the answer for the thing you prayed for, but you don't recognize it. And so, Lord, open up my eyes, open up my ears, open up my heart. Ephatha, help me to understand. Father, give me wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Father God, give me, get, just, just give me, Father God, the, 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 the clear vision. Show me, give me discernment of spirits so I can know whether it's of you or another spirit, an evil spirit. Or so I can know that it's the work of flesh. Show me, show me, Lord, because I don't want to make a mistake. That's why David kept on going back to God. He didn't want to make mistakes because the mistakes have consequences. And you cannot fight the giants on your own. You can't go against all that, all the problems that you're going through by yourself. You need the big and great God, El Shaddai. You need Yahweh Nisi, your victory banner. You cannot, the last time you tried, you, it didn't work out too good for you. Learn from your mistakes. And this time and forevermore, lean to God. Inquire in his temple. Do what God is telling you to do, and you will win on repeat in the name of Jesus. Janet says, praying for our ch children in schools around our country. Yes, we touch and agree that God is protecting the children. He says, the children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be their peace. He said, no weapon formed against them will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against them in judgment, they have a right, and we have a right to condemn. That is our heritage, and God is vindicating us. Amen. And so we cover the children and the families and our nations with the blood of Jesus. And we bind every murderous debt spirit. We bind the, 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 the hatred, the, the wickedness. We bind the strong man and we cast them out. Every, every death spirit, violent spirit, the Ninevite spirit, the Assyrian spirits. We bind and cast them out into the abyss. But we release life. And shalom, peace over our nations. In the name of Jesus, shalom means wholeness, lacking nothing, harmony, tranquility, wellness, protection, prosperity. We release the word of God upon the seven continents, the five oceans. We the believers, if my people, God didn't say everybody, my people, the church must pray all the time. Seek God's face. Turn from our wicked ways. Because there's no giant, there's no Philistine army that's bigger than God. There's no Egyptian army that's, you know, bigger than God. There's nothing too hard for God. And so we touch and agree with the word of God. Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, touching and agreeing, God said, I'm there and I will do it. And so God is protecting our families. He has gone ahead of us to give us supernatural victory, supernatural deliverance, supernatural protection in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Psalm 91 is our portion. No evil will come near our dwelling. We have the blood on the doorposts and the death angel must pass by, be bound and cast into the abyss. But we release life. We release John 10, 10. And the thief has been caught. The one that's been messing with you, he's been caught. And he must give you back seven times what he has stolen from you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 91 is everything. And God is a promise keeper. God keeps his promises. And I'm going to be on the side of the Lord. God said it. He's going to do it. That's what I believe. Whose report are you going to believe? And so I'm not posting, you know, every time 
you know, there is a, there is something bad. No, your posture and your position is to go into prayer. We're not magnifying wickedness. We go and shut it down in prayer. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, God says, then will I hear from heaven. I'm going to forgive your sins and I will heal your land. Don't be out there promoting all that stuff. You pray. You see what the, you see it. And, and don't, don't even wait until you see it to pray. You're praying 24 hours. Right? You're praying all the time in your heart. Under your breath. Pray without ceasing. Because we know that prayer can change things. When you pray the word of God. Just ask the persistent widow. She was praying. And that evil judge. After a while God began to turn his heart. So pray about it. Pray, knowing that Jeremiah 33 and verse 3 is your portion. God's going to answer you by fire. The same way he answered Elijah. Amen? Our God answers by fire. And he says, greater is he who lives inside of us than the devil in the world. We are more than conquerors. One of us can chase a thousand, but two of us can put 10,000 to flight. We got to pray, saints. Pray without ceasing. In the name of Jesus. That's why Jesus continued to escape and prayed by himself. All throughout the day, you should be praying. Plea in the blood of Jesus. Releasing the will of God based on his word. Don't be nervous. Don't go into panic mode. That's what Moses and the Israelites did. And God said, what you crying for? What do you have in your hand? We got the staff of the word, y'all. We got the staff of covenant. We got the staff of prayer. We have the staff of worship. King Jehoshaphat said, I don't know what to do. Father, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. You know what to do. And God gave them deliverance. That's our posture as believers. We don't respond like the world is responding. Nervous and out of control. Yes, we're grieving. Yes, we get sad. But we open our mouths and we decree and declare what thus saith the Lord. He said, no weapon formed against us will prosper. We put the blood of Jesus on the doorposts. We speak blessings over the children that they will not die but live to declare the works of the living God. Death and life are in the power of your tongue and you're able to speak those things that be not as though they were. But see, the enemy wants you to get in your flesh and your flesh wants you to get in the flesh and, and, and take your eyes off of God. No, look to the hills. That's where your help is coming from. Your help is coming from the Lord. Cry out to me. Cry out to me. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cries. You don't post all that stuff. You pray and decree and declare the word of God. The enemy's trying to mock. God said, I will not be mocked. And we, the believers, we respond by faith. We respond with the word. And God said, I respond to my word. I'm going to confirm the word that come out your mouth, the word of God that's going to be released from the fruit of your lips. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. And that's the word of the Lord today. Lord, I thank you. I cover this message. Everybody who's listening to me, I cover you with the blood of Jesus. We are sealed with the seal of the Holy Ghost. And I pray that this message has encouraged somebody the way that it encouraged me. I don't have to worry 
God is in control. David showed me how to respond to my problems. Jesus showed me how as well. He prayed all the time. Walked in the fruit of the spirit, walking in love. Hannah showed me how to respond. Moses' mother, Jochebed, showed me how to respond. Amen? Moses showed me how to respond. Get the staff of the word and face the Red Sea and face the rock. And God will give you water from the rock. And God will give you a breakthrough where you're walking on dry land, dry ground through the Red Sea. Gideon showed me how to respond to my problems. He had thousands in his army and God purposely decreased it to 300 so that only God would get the glory, not those men and not Gideon. And God is getting the glory out of my situation. And so I surrender in the name of Jesus. And I have the victory on repeat. Glory to God. Amen. Be blessed, victorious ones. And we will do this again. When the Lord said, come on, I'll come back on and we'll eat the word of God together.